On today's video, we're going over the top seven things you need to know before moving to Manalpa, New Jersey. If this is your first time to the channel, my name is Steve McCutcheon, and I'm a realtor with Berkshire Hathaway located over in Manalpa. And on the Live in Central New Jersey channel, we cover everything related to the Central New Jersey real estate market. So if you want to be the first ones to know everything going on in either Monmouth or Ocean County real estate, feel free to click the bell, hit the subscribe button, but let's get this video started. Alrighty, bring us up to our very first point, guys, and that's going to be the central location of Manalpa. So, Manalpa is pretty much almost smack dab in the middle of New Jersey itself, but as you can see on this photo that's coming up, you'll see that it's on the western side of Monmouth County. It borders towns of Marlboro, Freehold, and Millstone within Monmouth, and then you have towns outside of there in Middlesex County uh, on the western side, which is going to be like Monroe, Spotswood, maybe even a little bit of Old Bridge too. So the biggest thing though about um, Manalpa and its location is going to be the commutability to either New York City, Philadelphia, or the Jersey Shore. So you have Route 9 and Route 33 that go through Manalpin. Route 9 will bring you north to south, so north obviously going up to New York City. And that's going to be if you're going to like the Bronx, Manhattan, Brooklyn, one of those towns or boroughs. And then Route 33 is going to bring you east to west. East is obviously going to bring you out to the Jersey Shore, so you're probably looking about like a 25, 30 minute drive out to like Asbury, Belmar, Avon, one of those beach towns. And if you go out west, 33 will eventually hit to the New Jersey Turnpike, which you then take into Philadelphia, however, which way you want to go exactly. So it's a great spot to be, good location. You can kind of get a little bit, or kind of get everywhere uh, within the state or, or where you need to. Moving on to point number two, and that's going to be the school system and education in Manalpin. This is a big reason why we see a lot of young families move to the area because Manalpin has an excellent school system. So coming in from elementary, middle school, you have six elementary and two middle schools, total of eight. And they range anywhere from an A- minus to a B+, plus, according to niche.com. They also have it at a 16 to 1 student to teacher ratio, which is slightly below the national average of 17 to 1. Moving on to their high school, we have just Manalpin High School. It's a part of the Freehold Regional High School District. If you've seen any of my other videos, you know that the Free in the Freehold Regional High School District, your child can actually attend any of the six other uh, public high schools in the area, as long as they apply to the magnet program and they are accepted to that school's uh, specific program. So for Manalpin High School, they are a 15 to one student to teacher ratio. So again, it's slightly below the average. And they also have pretty good ACT and SAT prep work. So anyone looking to go to college, it's a great spot to be. And yeah, really can't say anything bad about the Manalpin School District. Checking in at number three, and that's going to be the low crime rate in Manalpin. Manalpin's a great spot to raise a family. There's really not, not much violent crime at all. And the property crime is still much lower than the national averages as well, as you can see from the photo popping up here. The property crimes though, the one thing you will have to worry about, if anything is going to be just car, car thefts, We've had a recent run in over the last couple of years in Monmouth County in general, not just Manalpin, Marlboro and Home Delbin hit pretty good too, um, which is carjacking. So don't don't leave your keys in your car, lock your doors at night, and there's really nothing you have to worry about. It is Manalpin's a great, safe environment and a great spot to raise a family. Coming up at number four, we're gonna have the parks and recreations throughout Manalpin. We'll just touch upon the, the two biggest ones. The first off is going to be the Manalpin Rec Center. That's going to be located right next to the high school, pretty much Route 522 and Taylor's Mill is kind of where they intersect. That's that's really gonna really the Manalpin Rec Center is going to be. Uh, they do everything from little league to you know football, pop Warner programs. Uh, they have outdoor basketball courts, roller hockey rink, pretty much everything you can imagine for sports wise. Then in the winter months, if you, you know, obviously don't want to be too cold playing outside, you're going to have Sportica that's located off of Route 33 in Manalpin. Uh, there's actually a Wawa right next door as well. So you have the Wawa on Route 33 and then one more building in is going to be Sportica. They do a lot of the similar stuff. They have an indoor turf, so you'll have soccer games on there, adult leagues too, baseball, lacrosse. Then they have a couple basketball courts for AAU and travel teams. So a little bit of everything in Manalpa. There's some other stuff too, but those are gonna be the two biggest. Coming up at number five is going to be the diverse housing options in Manalpa. So you get a little bit of everything in the town. You have townhomes or condos, then you got some single families, adult communities. The townhomes are going to start around that 300 to $500,000 range. Really good for that first time home buyer if you're looking to get into a good school system, get building up a young family, or just kind of starting off. When you move up to single families, you pretty much won't find anything for less than $500,000. Just kind of how Manalpin is, it's a typical, it's a little bit more of a higher or more expensive of an area. If you find anything for less than 500, you're more than like looking at something that's going to need a little bit of TLC or a decent amount of work done to it. And then for adult communities, that's going to range pretty far from your lowest ones, probably going to be in the Covered Ridge area, and that's around like maybe like 250-ish and up. And then you could find some really high-end adult communities that they're building over on Route 33 right now. Those are some Toll Brother homes, and I think they start around like that 700, 700,000 dollar range. So a wide range on the adult community prices, but without you know too much more talking, let's go check out a few of the communities as well.
number six is going to be the shopping and dining in Manalpin. So you have Manalpin, but you also have Marlboro and Freehold as well in, in other close proximity. All this is basically gonna be located off of Route 9 going north or south. So in Manalpin, you'll have shops like Wegmans, Best Buy, uh, Target, or Target, as some people like to call it. Then you got PC Richard & Son. Um, if you wanna go into Marlboro, they got Costco, ShopRite, Freehold has a ShopRite. But also in Freehold, you're gonna have the Freehold Raceway Mall, which is a big destination. It's a two-story mall, plenty of different shops there, and also different complexes or different stores outside of the mall as well, including like the Dick's Sporting Goods, Home Depot. Uh, they did give her the Toys R Us, unfortunately, but the Christmas Tree Shop. So we've got pretty much everything on the shopping side there. If you go into Manalpin for the dining, plenty of different restaurants as well. You got pizza, you can go over to Brooklyn Square, which is probably my top favorite. You can go to Nona's, which is gonna be my favorite restaurant. I'm kind of a big Italian guy, I do love that food. Um, known as awesome though, if you go with four or more people, you can do a family style dinner and they bring out a couple different courses, entrees, appetizers, it's awesome. Last but not least, we're going to have the economy or the economics of Manalpin. So there's four major job markets that pretty much take up about like 50 to 60% of the workforce in Manalpin. That's going to be uh, school and education, healthcare, finance, and retail. There are some other ones, but there are around maybe like that five or 6% to make up the rest. The other part, if you're living in Manalpin, a lot of people, like I mentioned before, in the beginning of the video, the reason they live here is to be able to commute either to New York City or Philadelphia. So you can go either north or go out west. You go to the big city, you make, you know, you know, make the big bucks out there, and then you come back home and raise your family, a nicer area, uh, you get a bigger house, more yard, all that kind of stuff. The cost of living though is definitely more expensive in Manalpin than the rest of the US. It's about 29% higher. It is lower than New Jersey national average, but that's you know it's not really saying too much. New Jersey is an expensive place to live. Um, that's why you do have to make a pretty good amount of, uh, of income to live there. So it's a little bit more expensive, but it's a great area to be. And that'll do it for the top seven things you need to know before moving to Manalpin, New Jersey. If you think about moving to the Central Jersey area, please feel free to reach out. All my contact information is in the comments down below, in the link, in the description, pretty much everywhere in this video. So if you're thinking one month, three months, six months, or even a year out, feel free to reach out. We'll just get you on the right game plan in order to get you to your buying or selling needs. Until next video, guys, have a great day.